All right, guys. Hey, welcome. Come on in. I'm uh, just going to set up and get ready right here. So as you guys come in, just say hey. Um, if, if anybody uh, is around, if you have any questions for me, uh, let me know and uh, we'll get started soon. Hey, welcome. We're about to get started in a few minutes. Hey guys, welcome. <coughs> oh, well, <clears throat> let's try that again. Hey guys, welcome and thank you for being a part of the Mitch's music family. Um, one of the things that I have really wanted to do um, in 2024, um, 2023, I feel like was, was more about just uh, getting sort of a foundation and this year, I, I've always had a dream of growing a community. And this year, I want to be more intentional with that. And so I want to make myself available to you guys. And um, this is one of the ways that I, I wanted to do it. Hey, Susan, how's it going? Um, good to see you. Um, and this is one of the things that I, I wanted to do. So I'm going to try to do this every Friday. Um uh, this is I'm, I'm at work. This is kind of my my lunch break, but I figured this is kind of the best time 
for for the majority of, of people. Um, honestly, the only other time I could do it is way early in the morning when I do all of my recordings. Um, and so I, I wanted to just start out the year um, talking about different things that that we may struggle with from from uh, chord changes or whatever um, we um, you know whatever we're we're working on and so um, I want you guys to feel free to send me your your questions um, things that you'd like to hear me talk about or go over um, and some of these things may change. Uh, so, so like right now I just have my computer. I may, um, do some, some actual guitar stuff today. I wasn't really planning on doing that. Um, because the topic that I wanted to talk about was, was a question that, uh, Steven, Hey, how's it going? Um, this was actually, uh, I got this from your email, uh, believe it or not. And well, you probably know that. Um, but, um, is is just how to how to know um like not only um what to practice but but when to to add on or when to um move on or i i guess in the end it, it's kind of when when do when can we look at something and say okay that's that's good enough and at least good enough to to move on to the the next thing, and I think I think to um, to preface my uh, feeling about this is is to let you know a little bit more about me. Um, I have always kind of um, I cannot remember all the way I from when I started. I guess I really, really started playing guitar around 13. Um, and even then I, I kind of had several things in the mix. Um, even, even from a beginner, once, once I started to learn chords and, and things like that, I always had a lot of songs going on. Um, and so my thought in general on this, I, I feel like the more things that you have that you're practicing, in some ways, the better. Now, I, I will say that that with all of the information on the internet, one of the things that I have struggled with is just moving from one thing to the other, back and forth, one thing to the other. Um, so first of all, I would, I, if, if I were starting from ground zero, um, I would start with, with five songs and say like, like I have, I have said in the past, if you've looked at any of my stuff from, from long, long, long ago, um, this is sort of my go-to method is starting with with five songs and depending on where you are, what you want to learn, um, then that's going to change how you learn those songs. So if your thing right now is you want to do chording, then learn the song straight through with chords, learn the verse, learn the chorus, learn the bridge if it has it and be able to comfortably play through each song, all five songs, right? And then I would try to add to those songs because my feeling as I, so I, I my background is I, I'm a teacher. And so what I see kids do all the time, kids meaning like the kids I teach, is they finally get something, right? And that's all they play. And so I would rather err on the side personally of having just a little too much rather than getting comfortable. 
I always like to, I, I, I guess personally, I, I kind of get bored sometimes. And, um, so if, if I don't have something new coming, that's hard for me personally. Um, and notice that I said five songs. I have felt like, uh, as far as practicing goes and what to practice, I have felt like when I was in college and trying to figure out the, like, how to learn guitar in a way, you know, I was, I had taken lessons a while back and I, I think I took lessons for two or three years and I was figuring out what to learn. I was in bands and so I've always had certain songs that I had to know really well because I was playing them in the band. And so if you have the ability to play with people so that you're kind of being forced to like really, like really, really, really know these songs, that's a great option to add to that as you're, you're going. So having some songs that you like, know, like you can just pick up a guitar. You don't have to think about like, that's it. But I, and, and so I always had that. I had the songs where, you know, I was just playing shows all the time in high school and in college. And then after that, um, and so, I had those songs that I knew really, really well. And so I think the struggle for me has always been trying to grow myself. And so what I, I would do personally to, to try to do that is I would just learn more songs. One of the things I remember doing in high school was I would just listen to the radio and try to learn a song before it went off. Not not putting a tape in and recording the radio or anything. I would actually just listen to the radio, have my guitar in hand, try to learn it before it left. And it was there and it was gone. And that's it. Let me see what you said, Stephen. I would say it depends on what you want to do. So, um, I would say if it, you're you're meaning chords and vocals uh, with you actually singing and playing at the same time, um, I would say I would say yeah. And and if if vocals are are something that you want to to work on, yeah, okay. So if vocals are something that you you want to to add to your song, what I think I would do. Um, if, if you find it hard to, to play and sing certain songs, I would have those songs as, as something that I'm, I'm practicing a little bit and I would really hit the songs with, with vocals and singing. I, I, I kind of take that a little bit differently because here's why. Because the more you do the songs that you're singing vocally and, and you're playing, both your vocals and your playing tend to get a little bit better at the same time every single time you're playing. So even if you have five songs that you are good at vocally and guitar-wise, I honestly would keep cycling those five songs. Um an example I, I can think of for me that um, I could not I could not play Dust on the Bottle, um, the David Lee Murphy song, and sing it in high school. I I couldn't to to save my life. I could play the song or I could sing the song. Couldn't do both. Hey, how's it going? Um, so I could play the song, I could sing the song. I honestly didn't even try. Um, and so if you have a song like that, where, where you're just like, I, I can't get my hand, my, my, my singing, those types of things. I, if you can't get those things to go together, um, one of the, the, the simplest things to do 
is just try to get super simple chords, like just strum, sing, strum, sing, strum, sing, kind of like that. And, but back to your, your question in the five songs, I would say start with some songs that you're super comfortable with and then slowly add a sixth, slowly add a seventh and try to maybe vary either the strumming pattern possibly or, or, you know, if, if you're into a picking pattern or something like that, then, um, then let me know. Uh, then, then that, that's another thing that you could do. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. The, the, your, your, your singing for guitar is, is, is definitely not going to come until, uh, until you, you are really comfortable with, with the, the strumming pattern. And, and that, that to me is the, the other, the other reason that, that I, it, as, as a, like when you're just learning guitar songs, that's the other reason that I kind of err at, in some ways, make it a little sloppy sometimes or be okay with being sloppy because I think that a lot of the times we strive for, for perfection too much um, to the point that, that we don't see our progress anymore. Um, and so we, we see this perfect that we have on the pedestal and because we can't get there, we're blind to the progress that we've actually made. Um, and in my opinion, one way to change that is to actually record yourself, start recording yourself. I mean, these, there's, there's so many people out there now that, that do these, these channels where they like show you their progress as, as a beginner. And even though I think like I've had, I've had people that have approached me that have done channels like that. And sometimes they come off as, as gimmicky, but as far as it actually helping you um, learn by yourself, I, I personally believe it does. I mean, and when, when I'm recording these songs, one of the things I'm, I'm like the perfectionist. And if I did not just finally get to the point where I said, okay, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. I probably would not post as many videos as I do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it uh so I picked up the guitar and I come here. Yeah, I and and see I I have found as far as like memorizing things, I have found that when I learn something with chords in front of me, I have to tear myself away from the chords. When I'm learning something by ear, it's incredibly easy for me to just memorize it for for it to 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 just kind of be there but if i you know pull it up on on a ultimate guitar or something like that or i have a chord chart it's so hard for me to get away from it um and and so that that's one of my my struggles is like like when i'm learning a new song sometimes i would almost rather not have music in front of me because I know that I'm eventually going to have to wean myself off of that somehow. Absolutely, Stephen. Uh, yeah, the passion for the music. Yeah, I think I think that you've got to to love what what you're doing, and and um, and that that's the the other the other problem with with perfection and like like when i went to college and was doing music all the time that's one of the the struggles with with doing that is is you get to the point where it's not fun anymore 
and you start to lose the passion. And so when I, I have never been one of the, um, the, the perfect practice makes perfect people because you're going to have imperfections as you're going through. And if you're not okay with those imperfections, just like gradually, slowly getting better, um, it's going to be really hard for you. And so I, I, you know, I've never really, um, I mean, you've got to be focused some to some degree. I think that that's what most people mean when they really say perfect practice makes perfect. But I, I think it's more of a focus thing. But, um, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, one of the, when I'm get, trying to give practice advice, I, I want you to give yourself grace um, because some things are just hard. Um, and so when one of the things lately that I have gotten to and where I am in my learning journey, because I mean, we're all kind of, you know, on this journey together, we're just at in different places is I have stopped. I have, a, I call it a 15 minute or 30 minute rule. If I can't get like a, a decent chunk into it in 15 or 30 minutes, like to where I, you know, am, uh, have made fairly good progress, I probably put it off until later. Um, that's not something I, I, I like to have a lot of songs that are incrementally like pushing me just a little bit, but not so much that I'm just like, oh, this is going to take like five years to get there. Yeah. Improvement over perfection for sure. For sure. And, and like I said, I, I would, I, I wouldn't want you to, to listen to it critically. So, so like say that you're, you do decide to record yourself. I would just do these recordings and maybe listen to them this time next year or something like that. So say that you're working on a song, pick a song, record it. Don't listen to it next week. Don't listen to it next month. Listen to it like next December, next January, something like that. Um, all right, guys. Um, so those are my general thoughts. I I would. So let me let me recap. So I would have. As far as what to practice. I would do five songs and, and I don't think I ever got to, to this point because I had started answering questions. I say five songs. Part of the reason that I put melodies and chords and things like that on my site is part of the melody is because people started to ask me to do that. But when I, started putting those melodies on there the majority of them some of them i do have sheet music that i have found and so i'm actually reading music so if it's like a jazz song or occasionally the country songs normally they're not in the right key and so i end up having to i mean i i don't know if you guys have looked up hank williams books none of them none none absolutely none are in the right keys I, it, it's annoying. Um, and I like for you guys, when I make a video, I want you to be able to pull up the song on Spotify and play along with it. That being said, as I'm learning these songs, I just got my guitar and I'm playing the melody and I'm trying to learn the guitar, the, the melody most of the time by ear. What I realized is that as I started to do that, now when I go in and, and do, because I, I try to do a video every single day, now that when I do that, I, I have gotten so much faster and it has gotten so much easier 
to learn the next melody and the next melody and the next solo and the next melody. And so all that to say, the reason I, I specifically say songs, not scales, not riffs, not licks, is because I personally feel like I wasted my time on some of that stuff in college, like learning the coolest new lick and the coolest new riff and trying to like 50 riffs in the key of A and things like that. I felt like I personally wasted my time on that. And so if there's a style of music you like, go to the source. If, if you like classic country, learn classic country songs, learn the melodies. That's going to help you understand whether it's a scale or not. That's going to help you understand what that looks like on the neck of, of the guitar and how to reproduce that over and over and over again. And so I, that's, that's kind of where I would go. Let me catch up over here. All right, I think I have catched up. All right, do you guys have any other questions for me? I'm, I'm about to have to run. Um, or do you have any um, future requests for like what we should do uh, next Friday um, at, at this same time? Um, and this is this is honestly for right now, this is just for you guys. So if if you are a member of just the tabs, um, or if you've signed up for any of the other stuff, um, that's, that's where we are. And, and, um, so just the tabs, by the way, um, because you guys can't like really see each other, but just the tabs right now, it's still kind of small, but, um, it's around a hundred members in within the whole thing. Um, I think it's around 500 now. Um, so it's, it's growing and my goal for this year is to bring all of that together. Um, so that hopefully we can start sharing ideas a little bit more, um, with each other and to, to kind of grow more as a community. And so that's, this is hopefully the beginning of that. Um, and so as always, let me know if you have any questions let me know if you have any problem. Um, and uh, I think that's it, guys. Thanks, Susan. That's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. So by ear, by ear is, is that's definitely one of the things that, that I want to talk about um, a little bit, because that's, that's honestly the first way that I started to learn. And then learning to, to read music was a little bit later. So by ear was first uh, and then reading music was later. And honestly, they, they complement each other so well um, that I, if, if I, I personally had to choose one, especially for guitar, if I was doing another instrument, I, I may go somewhere else with this, like piano, for instance, uh, you probably would be better off reading music. Um, guitar lends itself to being a by ear uh, instrument, partially because there's, it's, it's getting better but partially because there is a not a there there's just not a lot out there uh, for you to read. Um, hey, how's it going, Jeff? Thanks for coming by. And and by the way, you guys showing up um, right now. We're we're about to to finish up. But these um, I don't know where you're you're viewing it at. You may have just clicked the link in the email. But these will um, be, should be at the top of your member page. Um, and so as I post a new one, I'm, I'm going to figure out how I'm going to arrange that and everything. But um, this this should show up at the top of your member page. So if you want to go back and rewatch it, 
um, you can and add to the comments and let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Tab tab is Let me see what we got. Yeah, so let me see. I'm trying to catch up. Uh Yeah, so that <sighs> That is one of the trickier things with guitar and, and actually reading music. Tab Tab is, is definitely a very, for the most part, efficient way. Most, most tab, however, doesn't have rhythmic notation that goes along with it. Some of it does, but it, I mean, it's getting better at, um, at having rhythmic notation. So... In order to play tab, in general, you have to know the song first, um, most of the time, because you you just have tab on a fretboard. And you're you're right that guitar. The tricky part with guitar is on piano. There's, and I mean, it would be similar with fiddle but maybe a little less because you're, you've got a smaller four strings and a smaller area. But with guitar, you have several ways that you can play the same note. And so really with guitar, the, the trick with reading the music is learning how to play in different positions. And so um, if you want to learn to read guitar music and and you you just want that skill i cannot recommend the uh, berkeley method book like that's my favorite book um i've got one somewhere around here i think it's across the room i will um i will bring it uh i'll i'll have it i'll have it to show you the next time but it's this big thick book um that kind of walks you through by position on how to play um uh or to read music on guitar yeah and i and steven i, I see your string i have not looked at that one but i will i'll check that one out too but uh the yeah the berkeley method is is not for beginners either but uh with uh, Susan, with your your fiddle background, you may be okay with it um, because as long as you can just read and follow the directions and kind of understand what it's saying, I think you'll be all right. Um, and you can start slow, but basically it starts in first position, goes down to second, third position. And along the way, it has different songs that you can uh, learn to play. All right, guys, I am I am out of time and I need to run. But if you guys have any questions, you you have my email. If you have any problems, um, let me know. Um, like I said, I've told you guys before, um, I, I am always the uh, the one answering the emails. I don't. It's just me. So um, uh, just let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys next Friday. Um Thanks for stopping by. And um, if you have somebody that you think would enjoy um, watching this, uh, just uh, send them the link. The This is an unlisted video, so you can share the link. They can see the video if you share the link. Um, I'm just not putting it public on YouTube. All right, guys. Well, Thanks for stopping by again. Have a great day and um, I'll see you guys next week.